goal of this tutorial is to demonstrate how you would use overlap with a character rig to get quick overlapping action and follow through. I'm going to rig a bendy arm with forward kinematics and an antenna with inverse kinematics. Let's start with the arms. I'm going to zoom in on my arm graphics here and select the front arm. I'll choose my puppet pin tool, which is command P or control P on your keyboard. And I'm going to create four pins, one at the shoulder, one at the elbow, one at the wrist, and one at the end of the hand. I'll do the same thing for the back arm. Okay, now I'm going to rename my puppet pens. So starting with the back arm, I will create, let's see, the name will be B underscore hand. This uh, puppet pen will be B underscore wrist. This one will be B underscore elbow. And then at the top, we'll get B underscore shoulder. So B for back arm. Then on my front arm, I'll use the F underscore prefix and call that F underscore hand. This one will be F underscore wrist, F underscore elbow, and then F underscore shoulder. Okay, now I want to create bones uh, that I can use to manipulate these puppet pens. And uh, I'll use this script, uh, Dweek, for that. So the way Dweek works is you select a puppet pen and then click on the Bones button. And it creates this null object that you can then use to uh, manipulate your puppet pen. So I'm going to create bones for each of those puppet pens on my back arm, as well as the puppet pens on the front arm. So if I scroll up here, you can see all of the null objects that I just created. And now I'm going to create a, a joint hierarchy. So I'm going to make the hand the child of the wrist, the wrist the child of the elbow, the elbow the child of the shoulder, and then repeat that for the back arm. Okay, now that that's set up, I will drag these arms into place with my character. So I'll just drag that and line it up with the arm socket and do the same thing with the back arm. Now since this is profile view, I can line these up in the same location. And I'm now going to make both of these shoulders children of my head layer which is this larger white sphere here, or off-white. Okay, now I'm going to create an arm swing. So since this is in the contact pose on frame zero, I'll swing this to its extreme. And I want that to be forward about, I think minus 45 degrees will be good. And I'll scrub forward until the next contact pose, which is at frame 16, and I'll swing it back to be the opposite amount. So that is my arm swing. I am then going to create overlap for this animation. So I'll select my front shoulder, which has the keyframes on it, and I'm selecting it first. So that will make it the driver of this animation in overlap. So I'll then select the order that I would like these joints to be in, and then click on overlap. Now, as I mentioned, since I have keyframes on this layer, that's what shows up in, the, in this window. I also am, uh, all of these layers have rotation as a property, so that's why it's showing up as a overlap shared property. Uh, now I will go into the overlap preferences, and I'm gonna uncheck everything except for offset control and color labels. So since this is the left-hand side of the character, I'm gonna use the convention of blue for blue controllers for the left-hand side. 
So I'm gonna change my driver layer to blue and then the driven layers color to cyan. I'll then click OK. And you can see right away that overlap has worked. I'm getting this progressive uh, bend in my arm there. And you can see all of these are at minus 45 at this extreme. And then whenever I go forward, they go all the way back to plus 45. So the only thing about this is, if this were a more human style arm, I don't think I would want that much bend to it. I want it to be a bendy arm, but I don't want it to, to break this elbow joint. I want it to just lock whenever it hits that location. So I'm gonna use that offset that I created on the driver layer. So I'll select my driver layer, which is this shoulder, and it's here, this rotation offset. I'll create a keyframe at frame zero, and then scrub forward and create, well, actually, you know what I could do is go to the point where it's at its farthest, and then, um, well, I'll go to where all of them are at 45, and then I'll drag my rotation offset forward. So maybe about plus 38, and then I'll just drag that keyframe into location. So. Uh, it's in the middle of this kind of drag on the hand there, so I'm, uh, I actually want to decrease that just a tiny bit by dropping the frame delay to about three. So I'll select both of these keyframes now and create ease to give a slow in and slow out to each of these extremes. And by doing that, I'm able to uh, create a sense of weight for the hand and the shoulder. So, so that's my arm swing for now. And I now want to connect this animation on the shoulder to the back arm as well and drive that arm with these keyframes as well. So I need to create just one keyframe on the back shoulder. And what that's going to do is just tell overlap that that's the property that I want to be overlapped for these layers. So just click on overlap and I'll leave this the same. And I basically just want to make a driver that's almost identical to the front driver. The difference being that rather than it, uh, it being blue, since it's on the right side, I'm going to use red and then pink for the driven layer. So I'll click on okay. And now this layer is uh, ready to be overlapped. And so all I want to do now is just take the front driver and then overlap it with the back driver, back arm driver. So that'll control my entire animation with the front driver, front shoulder driver. I'll click on overlap and it recognizes that I have keyframes on my rotation offset and rotation and that, that those properties are shared between these two layers. So that's all good. Uh, I'll then open up the preferences here. And if I was to leave offset control, it would uh, use this offset animation and offset this uh, back shoulder and that's actually going to uh, double the effect for some of these layers here. So I'd, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to turn off offset and turn off color labels. I want to keep these layers, uh, yeah, the labels the same, the layer colors the same. So I'll click on OK. And if I'm going to turn off my head layer so we can see this a little bit better, and you can see that now the back arm is doing the exact same animation as my front arm, which is good. But I actually want this to be phase shifted with the front arm. So as the front arm is swinging forward, I want the back arm swinging backwards. And there's actually a button in the overlap interface here, which is the phase shift button that does that. So the way that I use it is by going into my... Uh, overlap properties and I just click on them and click on the phase shift button. You can see that that um, already has had a, an effect. I also need to do that for the rotation offset so that back arm joint isn't getting uh, broken. So there we go. And then there's one more thing I need to do and that is in order to get these perfectly in sync. Um, this frame delay, remember we edited it uh, to be three and this one's at five so I just would need to um, Link the two. So I'm just gonna lock this effects control panel for my front shoulder and then go into the frame delay of my back shoulder 
and hold down Alt Option and click on the stopwatch and drag the pick whip to that frame delay. So now if I click off of that, you can see now it's jumped to three. So those frame delays are identical. I'll turn the head layer back on, zoom out and do a RAM preview. And you can see I've got this great overlapping action and follow through on my bendy arms that I created for my character. In the next lesson, we'll create an IK for our character's antenna and then add overlapping action and follow through using overlap. Let's begin by creating inverse kinematics for our character's antenna. I'm going to zoom in to my Let's begin by creating inverse kinematics for our character's antenna. Let's begin by creating inverse kinematics for our character's antenna. I'm going to zoom in to my antenna graphic here. Select the puppet pin tool and create three pins. One at the top, one at the middle, and one at the base. And then going to rename those puppet pins This one I will call antenna base. The next I'll call antenna mid. And then the one at the top I will call antenna top. Now I'm going to select all of my pins and create bones for them. And the bones do the same thing that they did with the arms and that's manipulate those puppet pins. And uh, the last rig we used forward kinematics. So in this one, I'm going to create a controller that will drive our inverse kinematics. So I'm going to select the top, which is where I want to create my controller and just click on controller. And it creates this larger null object that you can see there, which will uh, drive all of the IK. So I'm going, going to create uh, parent-child relationships for all of my bones. I'll make the top a child of the mid, mid child of the base, and then I'm going to select the base and the top and then move these into position. Actually, first let me parent the ball with the uh, antenna top. Okay, now I'll select the top and the, or the controller and the base and drag the antenna into position. Uh, just to match the rotation of my character's head, I'm going to make the top a child of the base momentarily, and then make the base the child of the head, and just z uh, open up the rotation of the base and zero that out. So rotates everything to be in, al in alignment with my head graphic. Okay, now I'm going to unparent that controller now that we have it in the right location. And now I'm going to create IK by selecting the top, then the mid, then the base, and then finally the top controller. So I'll click on IK and it asks me which way I want it to bend, either counterclockwise or clockwise. I'm going to choose clockwise. It's going to ask if I want uh, FK controllers included in my IK controller. Um, I don't need them or controllers for stretch. So I'll just say, okay. And then after the script is run, I can drag this controller up and down and you can see what it's going to do. It's gonna create that nice kind of springy bounce to this uh, antenna. Then uh, the easy part is uh, creating overlap for this animation. So I'll select the head and then select the antenna and click on overlap. Now, uh, all of these properties, I'm going to overlap the X, the Y, and the rotation of the head. I just need to go into my preferences here and check maintain original. Because if I didn't, it would position the X and Y at the same location as the X and Y of the head graphic since uh, it's going to be the driver. So I don't want to do that. I want it to stay up here, up top. So I'm going to choose maintain original and click on okay. 
And now uh, if I scrub forward, you can see that I'm getting some bounce with every step that the character takes. The only thing is, is it's going beyond the length of this antenna. So I'm gonna uh, go to where it's at its extreme, which is about there, and just drag this down to where, actually just the antenna, drag that down to where I get some bend in my antenna. So let's see how that looks. All right, maybe just a touch to, so the good thing about this is, is that I'm, I'm still, I'm nudging the position of the controller, but it, it's not a keyframe based animation. So it, it, it doesn't really matter. You know, I don't need to consider keyframes because it's reading the position and rotation of the head layer. So uh, it's gonna maintain the offset wherever I, I place this. So that's a cool feature. So, okay, now I think that should look about right. I'll RAM preview that and we'll see what we created. Okay, in this tutorial, we saw how to get quick overlapping action and follow through in a character rig using overlap. Thanks for watching.